Tell us, for those who have not heard your history, what happened with Jody and what happened to you with Travis? Well, briefly, we, I knew Jody for a few months, and then we went out a couple of times. And then at one point, she decided to tell me she was getting back together with Travis. I had no idea they were even dating. And then I knew her for a good year and a half or so after we had gone out a couple of times. And, uh, you know, the bottom line with all of that is just the weird stuff that had happened along the way that I kind of dismissed as, well, she's spacey, she's a little, you know, flighty, whatever. And then when um, he turned up dead, that's when things got a little, you know. And she, she dragged you into a split. She started telling him that you guys were dating, even though you weren't, but you were friendly. You would talk on the phone and things. Yeah, absolutely. And, that's, and, that's, and that was the, the egregiousness of it. I mean, she was trying to make him jealous. And... You know, fortunately or unfortunately, I was the only guy that she had anything on in terms of emails and things like that. So it was easy to, to have a, a, a piece of fake evidence to sit there and say that, you know, I was responsible for Travis, quote unquote, abusing her. But she, had, you know, I found out after he was killed uh, that she had lied about a lot of things. And we had never seen each other again physically after she had told me that uh, she was getting back together. And we only ever talked on the phone and we were at a couple of business events together and that was it. Uh, Travis and I were acquainted with each other. We didn't know each other very well. And the sad thing about all of that is, you know, she made sure that we never were going to. And, and finally, this, this, remember that strange incident with the magic underwear or whatever? I, you guys were in a parking lot. I, 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 I blacked it out of my memory, but it's coming back to me as I chat with you again you today. You didn't black it out of your no, memory. No, I did. I did. You <laughs> didn't black it out of your memory. Well, honestly, what had happened was we had the, the, the one date that we had, we ended up in a clinch and we were fooling around a little bit. And she had told me earlier that night that she was dabbling in Mormonism. Now, if you know anything about the Mormon religion, it's not something you dabble in. You're looking at, you know, no coffee, no beer, no premarital sex. There's a lot of things that you don't do. It's not a religion for the faint of heart. Yet she said she was dabbling in it. So later that night, when we were, you know, in a clinch and fooling around, I, I had, you know, wanted to see if, what kind of panties she was wearing. And when I discovered it was a thong, I made a joke saying this isn't magic underwear, because if you know anything about the Mormon religion, they believe in, uh, you know, blessed undergarments or whatever you want to call it. And so I said, this isn't magic underwear. And she said, there's magic in them. So I thought that was kind of a key piece to throw out there, only because when she was showing up at the trial looking like little orphan Annie and trying to right. act like she didn't know what a sex act was, I thought, well, and, that's not true. And that she claimed that, that Travis was the one sort of pushing the sexuality on her. Uh, uh, Judy, do you have any opinion about that? I mean, the, I can understand that some women sometimes can feel traumatized when a man is aggressive, but she's the initiator in this case. Absolutely, Dr. Drew. The hypersexuality has been demonstrated over and over again with Jody, and in her history. There have been multiple exes that have stepped forward and talked about that part of their relationship. So this is not to be contested at this point. You know, what I really think is a key issue here is that Jody keeps trying to play the victim card, yet even her own parents will say Jody was troubled as a child. Not troubled like she was sexually abused and molested, but just troubled. Like her own parents appear to be afraid of her when you watch some of their interviews. Yes. And I think that that is really well, we're important gonna when we think that. about we're gonna that. We're going to get into that. I, now, speaking of her hypersexuality, Jennifer, I'm going to play you a little more of the phone sex recording, and we're going to talk about men and women, how differently people respond to her. Go ahead. I love it when you grab my butt because it feels nice, <laughs> but you only do it like when you're trying to prove a point to somebody else. <laughs> That's not true, but I always do it when I'm trying to prove a point to someone else. You cannot say I don't work that booty. Oh, never mind. You do know how to work the booty. <laughs> All right, so, so Jennifer, here we had a little conversation in the studio here during the break, and it, it, something kind of came clear for me, which is that most women look at Jody and they go, oh, we, we see this. We see what this girl's all about. And men look Absolutely. at her, men look at her and only see the sexuality and sort of get sucked in by that. It reminds me, Samantha, of the hot uh, felon. The dude that's the hot felon. You remember how you guys responded to him oh, and Dr. all the rest Drew. of us? No, no, it's it's the same version of it's a, the op, the the converse version of the same phenomenon, which is all the men looked at that guy and go, that guy's a drug dealer and he's not to be trusted, and you all were like, I don't okay, care. That's but not Dr. true, Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew. We like what we like. We yeah. we love sexual people. Let's just put it out there on the table. The more sexual you are, the more attractive you are to the opposite sex. I can't be mad at the fact that men might find her uh, attractive, and but any woman can look in her eyes and tell she is playing you. So if that between what her legs saying? is enough... What are you saying? What is that? What is that? <laughs> Teach oh the men God. something. Okay, what is that? What, what is, is that? It? It's Abe between her legs. It is the manipulation Abe, of the... Abe actually looked into those eyes. Let's see if he can relate to what you tell him he's, you see there. 
What I saw there was somebody that was hot, and I thought maybe I had a shot. She seemed a little airy, <laughs> and that's fairy, it. And that's there you it. go, Jennifer. <laughs> somebody this that was hot. No, no, he wasn't it's only checkers. looking at the eyes. He was looking between the legs. That's exactly where he was trying actually, to go, Dr. Actually, Drew, when if you she look was ugly, I wouldn't like have that. looked between her legs. Let's be honest. Uh, okay. So there. Right. So, okay, so, so okay. What, what do you All see right. in the eyes, Jennifer? What is that manipulative quality that men miss? It's that raw sexual attraction that women have, and she knows how to use it. It's like turning on a light bulb, Dr. You just described Drew, you every woman, the room, you just described you every woman since Cleopatra. What's that? You just described Say, every what? woman since Cleopatra. Well, no, but there's something no, these women are... Not every woman. Not every woman. No. You know if you've got it, and when you've got it, and you use it, and Jody knows that she is using it. She is using it throughout the trial. Right. She is dialing it up. She's dialing it down. She knows exactly what she's Samantha. doing. Samantha. Yeah, and it I'm works not, spectacularly uh -huh. so far. Hold on. One at a time. Samantha. Yeah, it is her form of manipulation, and when uh, I hear another the videotape... Form. Another yeah. form for her, right. yeah. Right, another form of manipulation. When I hear the tape, she has a very cunning way of making her herself look to be uh, very, God, I don't even know what choice of words I can use here, uh, worked up because she's so desired by Travis. But at the same time, she is a way of, of making Travis feel desired. Yeah. So she kind of puts him on a pedestal and then plays her role and then elevates herself by making herself be the aggressor. It's this back and forth that I game. see that, in my opinion, is just pure, pure, pure manipulation. Okay, Jennifer? Absolutely. It's a sex game. It's right. a game that we play amongst one another. Now, she is, I'm sorry, she's a psycho. She's sick. Yes. And he wanted it. So, you know, you got this combination that's explosive and, and, in this regard. And, Judy, he was uh, unable to show that part of himself to anybody, and she somehow got it, manipulated it out of him, and he just, it, like you said, it exploded because he was being, trying to be the good Mormon child, Mormon kid. That's right, Dr. Drew. Something about Jody, she knows exactly what a person needs and she goes and she takes it out of you and that is the manipulation that I believe Jennifer and Sam have been talking about I believe every woman has that power but if you abuse it that's what makes other exactly. women hate you and that's exactly. why women respond that way to Jody whereas right. men fall for it all right here we go men Dude, in general hold on no just you Abe evidently <laughs> <laughs>